It takes courage to have a straightforward conversation with your family about the future, about the unexpected, about something bad happening to you or dying. It is important to find out the facts about organ and tissue donation, to think about them and how they relate to you and how you feel about it, and then make a decision that is right for you. Planning ahead may, in the long run, help your family in the same way that making a will does. Some people think that if they have ticked the yes to organ donation box on their driver's licence, that that is enough. And sure, it's a good start. But what does ticking that box actually mean? A lot of people don't even remember ticking that box. They subconsciously know that it's ticked, but they never really think about what it means or when it would matter that that box has been ticked. If you die in a hospital, there is generally less than a 1% chance that you could become an organ donor. It is in fact incredibly unlikely that you would be able to donate your organs. However, if you do die under the rare circumstances that mean you could potentially be an organ donor, it is really important that we try to do everything we can to help support the decision that you made. Be respected and upheld by your family. And when it comes to donating your tissue, a lot of people don't know that most people who die, no matter where or how they die, could help change the life of someone, restore the sight of someone, even if you yourself wear glasses, you're over the age of 80 years, and even if you die of cancer. There are roughly 1,500 people every year in Australia suffering from a serious life-threatening illness or disease where receiving an organ or tissue donation is the last avenue for hope or survival. If you think that donating your organs and tissues when you die is something that you would like to do, then finding out the facts about donation, registering your intent on the Australian Organ Donor Register and letting your friends and family know about your decision is something that you should do. You need to know that at the end of the day, it is your family that will be asked to give the final okay for you to be a donor. If they're not sure about your intent on your driver's licence or what you had decided, they may just say no. When it comes to organ and tissue donation and planning ahead, who will speak for you when you can't speak for yourself? Planning ahead is the way that you can speak for yourself when you are sick or unable to make decisions. There are several ways that you can plan ahead in relation to your decision about organ and tissue donation. The first is to discover the facts about organ donation. Don't assume you're too sick or too old to help others. Decide what you would like to do and then register by going online, by sending in the registration form or by calling the Australian Organ Donor Register and indicate your wishes there. Another great step is to include your decision as a documented part of your advanced care directive. Part 3 relates to what is important to you and communicates to healthcare providers your values and beliefs when you're unable to do so for yourself. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, you should make sure that you discuss your decision with those closest to you and any substitute decision makers to ensure that they know how you feel about organ and tissue donation so that your wishes are respected and they can confidently support your donation decision. By planning ahead, you can save your family the additional stress and anxiety of making such a big decision at a time that is incredibly difficult for them. Take control of your future today and plan ahead.